Thanks, babe. That's the nicest thing you've ever done for me. <laughs> Last week on Finding Avalon, you joined us on a voyage just shy of 20 days across the Atlantic Ocean. Sparkle laundry, sparkle laundry, this is Finding Avalon, Finding Avalon, over. After a few days getting settled in St. Lucia, we were back to life on the hook. Our Bruce anchor doesn't tend to set well on a weedy bottom, so I had to dive down and dig it into the sand, then watched as Jackson reversed on it to set it. That thing is not going anywhere. Thing's moving. Dug in, yeah, it wasn't, it didn't move a centimetre. So, about time, little Avalon finally gets a scrub. Lucia for a few days now and we've just since then we've been trying to find our land legs and uh, we moved from the marina into the anchorage yesterday and we've just been adjusting to life back on the hook and I can tell you it's good to be back. So today I'm going to talk to you about eggs. I was head of provisioning for the Atlantic crossing and I involved the boys in the provisioning chat as much as I possibly could so I started a group message about two months before we left and there was a lot of backing and forthing of this is my favourite food, this is what I don't like and this is what I'm going to eat every day and the boys reckoned that they were going to eat eggs every second day so I answered to that, wasn't sure how that was going to go and uh, yeah, they didn't eat eggs every second day, so we're literally swimming in eggs. So these eggs are about 10 days out of date, but what I've been doing to keep them fresh is just flipping them every second day. And you'd be surprised how fresh that keeps them. I also coated them all in Vaseline to stop oxygen getting through there, and they're still going strong. So we're going to make a very egg he heavy recipe this morning, it's one of our favourite recipes on the boat. It's two ingredient banana pancakes, they're very healthy. Before you attempt using out of date eggs, you'll need a glass. Now we would normally do the float test but we live on a boat and water is sacred, we don't have a water maker so we can't do the float test because it's an unnecessary use of water and you can't do the float test in salt water because it's got a different density than normal water. So what we do is just crack it into a glass, have a sniff, have a look. That one seems to be a keeper. So for this recipe you want two eggs per person. So I'm just going to go ahead and crack four eggs into the bowl to 
just individually into the glass first. So now that we've got our four eggs in there, all we need to do now is mash up some banana in there. So I'll normally do half a banana per person, but if you like them extra banana-y, there's no reason why you don't do a whole banana per person. This literally goes in here and just give it a mash. So once the banana's all squashed up in there, all you're gonna do is just mix it all in. And it's quite nice if there are chunks of banana in there because they go kind of caramelly and squidgy in the pancake. So once you're happy with that, just need to add sea salt or pink salt. Just a pinch, a bit of cinnamon. Just a pinch again. And today I'm gonna to add turmeric, but that's not really a necessary part of the recipe. I just feel like it today. It's very healthy for you. So just a pinch of that. Then what I like to do is chop up banana so there's actual chunks of banana that you can sprinkle on top of the pancakes. Higher than the rice so now what you wanna do is get a pan, add some coconut oil, so you want to wait till that oil's nice and hot and then just imagine that this is a normal drop pancake and you're going, going to grab a ladle and stick it in the pan. And then you want to stick your banana chunks on top. till they're really solid around the edges and then give it a flip and it should be golden on the bottom and then you want to cook it on that side for another minute and a half and then it should be good and then just a little bit of peanut butter on top and bob's your brother's mother and if you catch them while they're still hot and you put the peanut butter on it goes all melty and lovely not the prettiest but the yummiest bob's your mother's brother yeah because if it's your brother's Oh, did I say it the wrong way around? If it's your brother's mother... I meant to say then Bob's mother's you, brother. Then, then Bob's your mum. Breakfast in bed! Ever since arriving in the Caribbean, Jackson had been obsessing over the idea of harvesting his own coconuts. So, it was finally time to scratch that itch. It's kind of an acquired skill, but once you get it down, it's pretty easy. Coconuts are a lot easier to remove from the stalks, like these ones here. I like to start with the hard ones, but I'm not sure the easy ones. I know how much energy I have. When it's time to descend, I like to do a control slide. I get my butt and my thighs up against the tree. on earth have we here Jackson? I'm gonna give my hand. <laughs> You're gonna give your hand? Yeah you probably I'm are. I'm gonna give it a try to climb a coconut tree and get a coconut. I watched a YouTube video so I know how to do it.
taken a safe distance because a coconut to the head is possibly one of the worst deaths. So, oh wow, you just hit a rat. Oh my god. What? You just threw a coconut at a rat. A rat just came running out of a tree. Well, it's raining coconuts. Oh. <laughs> that was incredible. That Look was at like all the hardest coconuts. thing I've ever done. Look at them all. Oh mate, that's so good. That's super fresh. Thanks babe. That's the nicest thing you've ever done for me. <laughs> so the cutest thing about all this is actually me and Jackson shared our first kiss over the topic of coconut. Yeah. I finally went and caught you on. We'd known each other for a while and we'd grown pretty fond of each other and we were just having a little conversation about whether a coconut was a fruit or a nut and I think at that point I just felt <laughs> like this conversation has got so ridiculous let's just kiss <laughs> so that's where it all began thanks mate give me some it's quite quite gritty oh is it it's nothing like the stuff that you get out of the bottle or out of the carton in the supermarket. It's more, it is less sweet, which I quite like. It just tastes more real. Here you go. place pretty much bang in the middle of the pack of 279 boats and sadly we didn't win any prizes but our friend Charlie and his family won a prize for their division. Thanks for checking in with us this week if you got this far then I salute you. You may have noticed the quality of our videos has improved quite a bit since the beginning. Over the next few weeks you will see, see them improve exponentially even more, skyrocket in fact because we just bought a few new gizmos and we've just learned how to use them. And that's all thanks to our patrons, so I just wanted to do a little public appreciation post for them. We've got a Patreon page which is basically for anyone who likes what we do and wants to help us out with a donation, however big or small, to improve our camera arsenal. And those lovely people have afforded us to make our videos the videos they are today. 
Uh, the latest thing on our shopping list of new gizmos is a new drone. Oh. Uh, I didn't think we were ready to talk about this one. Yeah, no, we're definitely ready. Unfortunately, in the Canary Islands, which was about two months ago now, Xanthi decided to test the limitations of our drone and really explore its submarine qualities and capabilities. Uh, unfortunately, our drone is not submersible in water and has since not recovered. While we did recover the drone, eh, still in intensive care and not looking good. Not looking good. So you might have been noticed that episodes of late have been droneless. This is why. We're really curious to know whether you think it is a vital part of these movies because obviously they're expensive and we're still toying with whether we should buy one or not. Also a huge personal thank you to a lovely Kiwi man named Scott who gave us this camera. It's his old camera that he doesn't need anymore and we really need it so Scott we love you. You're an absolute legend mate thank you so yeah, much. You are a living legend don't you forget it. And then the other thank you was to all the music artists who obliged to let us use their music in our videos. And I've just updated the bank with a whole bunch of new tunes for you to get excited about hearing in the next few episodes. We hope you enjoy seeing a few new things this year. I'm releasing the Tantalising Tidbit series which is basically a collection of top tips and lessons that we've learned over the last six months. There are going to be more demonstration videos and technical videos, which are some of the hacks that we've stumbled across along the way. I really hope that a few more of my mistakes means a few less mistakes on your part, so I really hope you enjoy them. Most of these are going to be released on our Patreon page, and a few of them will be released on our YouTube channel. Yeah, so to state the obvious, if you love what we do and want to help us out, then subscribe if you're not already, and click the button that looks like that. And until next time, bye. Bye guys. Next week we're joined by friends from Australia, Mike and Christy, who join us for a doomed week on the boat. We encounter a series of disasters, including, but not limited to, non-stop rain, a broken whisker pole, and a broken alternator leaves us marooned in Martinique. So, we've got our old, old, old alternator here. We eventually make it to our intended destination, Dominica, which was definitely worth all the bother.